Hey what's going on guys, welcome back to Say Weekly Builds for another video and another review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at JM Bricklayer's brand new set, the White Swan Chip. Now although JM Bricklayer have sent a set over to me for review, for free, all opinions are completely my own and I will be demonstrating that later because I have quite a lot of opinions. Um, quite a lot good, quite a lot negative. So let's just get straight into this review and I'll catch you guys on the other side. Okay, so I'm just about to start building the set and this is pretty much what you get in the box. So obviously you've got your instruction manual, your sticker sheet, and then you have six numbered bags. Now it is worth noting that each of these bags do contain smaller bags. However, if I throw up a picture on screen of the last JM Bricklayer set that I built, there was a lot of kind of individual bags and it was a little bit confusing. So this is much better. Now, whether or not they took my criticism into account or whether this is something they were planning to do, I don't know. But this is far better. It's much more organized and I haven't got a trillion bags laid out at the same time, which is lovely. Now, you do also have a seventh bag here and this is full of all of your kind of like cloth materials, your strings and stuff. And I haven't actually ever used kind of Lego, quote unquote, Lego rope or Lego kind of cloth pieces. And I'm excited and also kind of nervous because I know it involves a lot of tying knots and there appears to be a lot of string in this set. But yeah, this is much better than the previous set. There is quite a lot of stickers and yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. So without further ado, let's get straight into this build. Before we get into this review, I just want to say a massive thank you to Jay and Bricklayer for sending this set over to us for review. While the set was provided for free, all opinions are completely my own. They haven't told me to say anything regarding the set. If you do want to pick up this set or any of the others that JMB have to offer, be sure to do so using our promo code JMBDWB15 to save 15% off your total order or by using our affiliate links in the description below for either Amazon or JMB's website. If you sign up using JMB's website, you can take advantage of their brand new points reward system where every dollar spent gives you 10 points in return. When you sign up as a member, you get just enough points to redeem a custom printed tile for free. Thanks again to JMB for sending this set over to us for review. And now let's crack on. Access granted. So my experience with building the set was really positive, at least to begin with. The first few bags as I was making my way through the brick building portion of the set were really enjoyable. The instructions were clear and concise and the entire set felt like a vast improvement over the medieval windmill I'd reviewed previously. Nothing was overly complex or difficult to understand with my only slight gripe being that perhaps they still included too many steps at once. But really, if you're someone that's built pretty much any sort of Lego set or other building set previously, it wouldn't be too much of a problem as long as you take your time and make sure you read the instructions properly. However, as I was making my way through the initial couple of bags, I did run into one small problem. Alright, so I'm just building this part, uh, step number 146. And I've got an issue. Now, I've, I'll be honest, this is actually really disappointing. And it's this. Now, I've had, like, pieces with mould defects before. But I'm not sure if I've ever had one this bad. Like, it's really bad. It's missing pretty much an entire corner of the piece there. And as you can see, the plate there is, like, broken as well. And this is the type of thing that, honestly... Like, Jay and Bricklayer, and I know a lot of other brick kind of building companies have these sort of issues. They need better quality control because this is really kind of unacceptable. I mean, it is still a premium product, even at a cheaper price point than Lego. It's still an expensive set and expensive product in general. And this type of thing, like, you can't really be having that in these type of sets. Now, it's not a massive deal. I'm sure it will still work. And if it doesn't, then... I guess I'll either have to replace it with a different color piece or just sort through my Lego collection to see if I can replace it, but I shouldn't have to. And it is a bit disappointing that this is kind of an issue. Now, this is the first issue I've had with this set, so I'm not gonna diss it too much, but again, it's really rather disappointing that this kind of thing makes it through their quality control. 
But as I went on with building this set, this wasn't really too much of an issue in the final product. The pieces still fitted together and it still functioned as a regular piece. And in the final product, you'd only really notice it if you were specifically looking for it. There's some surprisingly great building techniques and details scattered throughout the set that really add to the overall quality of the set. All the details you build on the deck of the ship work nicely. The masts are all solidly constructed and the small details like the lifeboats and the cabins which, as you'll see later on, are in fact removable and they've got a bunch of hidden details. Both of these are great. Micro details really look fantastic and really add to kind of, I guess, the immersion of the set. The stickers, while pretty plentiful, all help the set to feel more complete. Now, of course, I'd love more printed pieces. I mean, who wouldn't? Stickers can be annoying. And I did have a little bit of an issue where I kind of thought that the stickers were the standard LEGO stickers, where in fact they were the kind of transferable stickers, which isn't too much of a problem, but I did have to go back through the set and remove a bunch of the transfer sheets, but it's not really that big of a problem. It was just me being an idiot. But although more printed pieces would have been nice, the majority of the cabin windows on the side of the set are printed. However, I'll be honest, they don't perfectly line up, which unfortunately again is another point deducted for quality control. It just feels a bit lackluster. And honestly, that was my main issue with the set while building it. It's constructed well for the most part, don't get me wrong. It looks great and it, it works well as a set. But there are quite a few areas where poor quality control really do let it down. And unfortunately, this point just becomes even more prominent towards the later half of the build. The techniques begin to feel a little less rigid and the instructions a lot of the time become very... See how it looks in this picture? Yeah, find your own way to make that work. Now the chains at the front of the ship were tedious and annoying because obviously I had to assemble them link by link because for whatever reason, Go Bricks and Jay and Bricklayer can't provide us with pre-made chains, I guess. But more specifically, I'm talking about the railing, which uses Jay and Bree's equivalent of Lego's flex tube and the sails. Ah yes, the sails. So for a bit of context, I have never used kind of Lego string or Lego cloth pieces in a build. And you might be wondering, Jake, your build doesn't look exactly like the build on the box. Why is that? And that's for one reason. I literally couldn't. As I began to thread the string pieces and raise the sails, literally every single one of the triangle sails broke on me. The corners would tear if the string rubbed on them too much and the quality of the sails just felt off compared to the rest of the set. If the building experience of the set is a Lamborghini, the sails are that second-hand Fiat 500 you got off a mate who knows a guy who can get it for cheap. I mean, honestly, the quality of the sails is abysmal compared to the rest of the set, and what would have otherwise been a near-perfect building experience was almost entirely ruined by how frustrating the latter portion of the set becomes. In the end, after nearly three hours of gluing sails, learning more knots than the Boy Scouts, I had to call it quits. Maybe I just got unlucky, but maybe not. Either way, I felt it's my duty to let you know. So overall, what did I think of the set? Well, I mixed. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there's a lot of good to say about the set, and unfortunately, quite a bit bad. The first few bags of classic brick building felt really good. There's not much I'd want them to improve upon. All of the pieces fit together well, the brick quality is pretty damn great and close to Lego, and despite the previously mentioned bad moulding on one of the pieces, there isn't really much to complain about. Would less stickers have been nice? Yeah, sure. I'm not someone who particularly has much of an issue with stickers in sets, but there are a lot of areas where I think the lack of printing was just cheaping out. Speaking of printing, however, JMB also sent me over two custom printed 4x4 white tiles to showcase for you guys. As you can see on screen, I asked for our logo to be printed, and I think they turned out pretty well. I believe Jay and Bricklayer uses screen printing, which is what a lot of custom minifigure companies use, I believe. And often they result in, I guess, a slightly fuzzy appearance, and you can definitely feel the area which has been printed. Now, I'm not saying this isn't the case here, but this is definitely one of the better kind of instances of this I've seen, and there isn't much of an issue. 
And if you do want to pick up your own custom printed tile, all you need to do is sign up as a member for free on their website and redeem a free custom printed tile with the points you get at sign up. So back to the build. As I mentioned, the build was going great for the majority of the ship and I was really impressed with the design choices made. The hidden cabins are a really nice and fun detail that honestly weren't necessary in the slightest, but I'm glad they're there. As I talked about earlier, the build really does start to diminish in quality for me when you get to the sales. Now I've rambled on enough about these, but it really is disappointing that these turned out the way they did, and without such a strong build leading up to it, it would probably make me tell you not to buy this set. However, the set does have that strong build leading up to it. And even with me not being able to fully complete the final product, it still makes for a really great display piece, which I think perfectly sums up the set. There is a lot of good, a lot, but there's also a fair amount of not so good. And for that reason, I'm not going to tell you whether or not you should buy the set, because I'm sure with a lot of patience and persistence, you'd be able to make the set as is intended. But for me, I'm not that patient. The White Swan ship is available now from Jay and Bricklayer's website and on Amazon, both of which are linked in the description. If you do want to pick up this set or any of the others that Jay and Bricklayer have to offer, and trust me, they have some truly unique sets to offer, then please be sure to do so using the links in the description. Any purchase made using those links or by using our promo code JMBDWB15 at checkout. It gives us a little bit of kickback so we can continue to produce bigger and better content for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and again, a massive thank you to JMB for sending this set over to us for review. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.